asking that you bless these services. I pray now that you not allow us to miss the magnitude of this moment. For this is the moment that we've been waiting for. Everything that we've done today has been geared up to this moment. Everything we've done in this service has been in preparation for this moment. Not to hear me, but to hear you. So we pray now, God, that because this moment is so important that you not allow anything to ruin it. Don't allow anything to come up to cause us to miss it. We want to hear your voice clearly. Pray now, God, that you will manipulate my mind to allow me to articulate your agenda. We pray now for the persons that we're standing beside. Bless this, my sister, my brother. Help us to realize what's really important, which is the elevation and the magnifying of your son, Jesus. Do it for us tonight. We ask this in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. While you're still standing, grab your Bibles and open them to the book of Hebrews. And while you're finding that, let me thank God for all of our pastors who are here and all of our ministers in the pulpit and the pew. And I thank you so much for your conformity and, and your presence tonight. And the members of our diaconate ministry and our pastors and ministers' wives who are here and ushers and musicians and singers, visitors if there's any. We greet you in the name of our Lord and our Savior Jesus, the slain yet risen Christ. I just want to lift up a few words and talk about Jesus tonight and we're going um, to receive of our communion and, and be ready to move forward tonight. Hebrews 4. Um, verse 14 through 16. Um, familiar uh, passage of scripture. I just want to say a word or two about Jesus tonight. Uh, and um, we'll be ready for communion with him. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14 through 16. And when you have it, these words are recorded. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has gone through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the, to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses. But we have one who has been tempted in every which way, just like us, yet was without sin. Therefore, let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. You may be seated in the very presence of the Lord. I want to preach tonight with your prayers needing God's power in the form of a question tonight, which is, what makes him better? Turn to somebody and just ask your neighbor. Says, neighbor, 
what make him better? Yeah. Well, what ushers, you may be seated. What, what, what makes Jesus better? What, 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 what makes him better than any other God? What, what, what makes, what makes him, what make him better? This evening, my brothers and sisters, this, this text tonight is specifically addressed to a group of Christians in Rome who are standing on the crossroads of a major decision. This particular epistle is addressed to individuals who are standing on the crossroads. They're torn between reverting back to the former faith, which is Judaism, or holding fast to the Christian faith, which they had recently embraced. This decision, my brothers and sisters, that they're faced with making is, is one that's not going to come without consequences. If they revert back to their former state of religion, Judaism, they would stand accused by God of being outside of his will. However, if they stood fast and held firm to their profession to choose to remain faithful to the Christianity and to Christ, which they had recently embraced, that meant that persecution and trial was literally on the horizon. And this is the decision, my brothers and sisters, that they have have to make at the time of this text they are literally vacillating in their faith they are they don't know which way to turn should we stand or should we go backwards and the aim of this anonymous writer is simply not to get them to continue embracing christianity but the aim of this writer is 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 really to get them grounded in the faith somebody just say grounded in the faith because the writer obviously recognized that there's a bigger, a bigger problem besides their denominational confusion. Meaning that he recognized that their real problem is not them vacillating between Judaism and Christianity, but he recognizes that the greater problem is their foundational instability. He, he's come to the conclusion by by, by assessing where, where, where they are, that, that their biggest problem is, is, is not their inability to so much withstand the trial of the enemy, but he recognizes that their biggest problem is that their foundation wasn't strong enough to handle it. He, 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 he recognizes, and you just said it, that they had a faulty a faulty foundational foundation, which is pivotal, my brothers and sisters, because if our foundations upon which our houses are built upon is not solid, whenever trial and tribulation comes, our building will lean in every direction. Are you hearing me today? I think that that's one of the problems that we're facing now in church and in our society is that we have too many individuals that are spending much time trying to build beautiful houses on faulty foundations. This writer recognized the fact that uh, their greatest problem was foundational instability and, and was interesting because he recognized that this was the problem. What he does is he, he devotes 10 of the 13 chapters of this epistle called Hebrews to doing nothing but laying the groundwork for foundational development. You, when you read um, the book of, of, of Hebrews, the book of Hebrews is not one of those books that, uh, that, that's often read a lot uh, in church because it, it's a book of instruction. It, it's, it's a book of, of principles. It, it's a book 
uh, that literally um, establishes the preeminence of Christ. When, when you read the book or the epistle of Hebrews, the aim of the writer uh, is simply to, 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 to lay a foundation upon which we can build our earthly houses upon. I, I encourage every believer to spend some time reading um, the book of, of, of Hebrews or the epistle of Hebrews because uh, when you read the epistle of Hebrews, you come to understand that, uh, that the buzzword of, of Hebrews is uh, better. Somebody just shout better. Uh, the aim of the author in writing uh, Hebrews is to literally prove that whoever you can think of, uh, Jesus Christ is better. He's better than angels. He's better uh, than Moses. He's better than he's better than the prophets. Uh, he, 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 he's, he's writing um, this letter to, to get it in their minds that Christ is uh, better. Just tap your neighbor, says neighbor, he's better. He's better. He, he's better, and I, I have to pause to mention parenthetically that, that the writer is concerned about their concept of Christ. Because, brothers and sisters, if your concept of Christ is not clear, nothing else in your life will make sense. If your concept of Christ is not, uh, it is not clear, if, if you really don't know who he is, if, if you really uh, don't know the power that he has, if you really uh, don't know his purpose and his plan, if, if you really uh, are, are clouded on the issue of, of Christ, nothing else in your life uh, is going to make sense. And so what the writer does, stay with me, the, the writer, uh, he spends the greater part of this book j j just trying uh, to talk about Christ. He, he wants them to know that Christ is uh, better. And, and, and what's interesting is when you get to this fourth chapter, um, um, the writer, he, he takes something that they are uh, familiar with. He, he takes um, this concept of, of the high priest. The, the, these believers, they, they, they knew the role and the responsibility of, of the high priest. In fact, one of the greatest patriarchs in their history was Aaron, who was um, the first high priest. They had such great uh, regard for Aaron, and, and, and they, they reverenced that the high priest they, uh, they, they they thought that the high priest literally was the best thing walking and and what the writer does is something very interesting uh, uh, the writer takes something that they are familiar with and the writer literally says well if you think that your high priest is special if, if you think that your high priest is all that uh, let me take the time to talk about Jesus Christ because if, if, if you think um, that Aaron was special, if you think um, that your priests are all that, you, you, you've got to understand that Jesus is better than the high priest. And, and what it does is something very interesting. In these few verses, verses 14 through 16, uh, uh, he makes the argument uh, by saying that there are three things in, in this little short pericope that, uh, that proves the, the fact that Jesus was uh, better. And I want to unpack this text, th these few verses very quickly, uh, um, j j just to make my argument of why I declare that Jesus Christ is better. Uh, in verse number 14, look at what he says. He says, what, what makes him better is the fact that our high priest has gone uh, through uh, the heavens. Look at what the writer says in verse 14. The writer um, literally says that what makes Jesus better uh, is that he has uh, resurrected into heaven. Repeat that with me. Say, he's resurrected in the heaven. Now that's very that 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 in and of itself. I got to take my time to unpack, unpack this because that that phrase in and of itself uh, is a very powerful uh, phrase uh, uh, because what it does is uh, uh, it compares the limitlessness of God uh, to uh, the, uh, to how limited um, the priests were uh, uh, because you got to understand that even though Aaron and others were the high priests, uh, th th there were limitations on how far Aaron 
Aaron could go. That, that even though Aaron had the permission to walk uh, in the inner courts and had the permission to go behind the veil uh, into the holies of holies, uh, uh, the writer is making a point to prove uh, that Jesus is better than the high priest because uh, uh, when Aaron uh, got to the holies of the holies, uh, that was the farthest he can go. But look at what the writer says about Jesus. Uh, the writer says that he has not only uh, gone to the holies of holies, but the writer says uh, that we have the high priest who has literally gone through the heavens. Now, 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 maybe that verse really uh, don't 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 uh, 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 illustrate uh, the point I'm trying to make. But when you read verse 14 in the transliterated Bible, uh, that that phrase "gone into the heavens" literally mean uh, that Jesus Christ is in the very presence of God. Uh, the text suggests that Jesus Christ has been resurrected into heaven. Tell your neighbor he's resurrected in the heaven. Now, I, I know that that's not shouting material um, for some of you, but you got to understand uh, uh, that him being resurrected into heaven uh, is enough in and of itself to give God the highest praise. Because the phrase that Jesus Christ being resurrected into heaven, uh, number one, uh, it is through his resurrection that we understand uh, the source of our preaching. Can the church say the source of our preaching? In other words, Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 14, that if Christ be not raised from the dead, then our preaching is useless and our faith is in vain. Paul said that if Christ has not been raised from the dead, then our faith is futile and we are still in sin. Therefore, the mere fact, watch this, that Jesus Christ has been resurrected from the dead, that gives a substance to our sermonic presentations. In other words, brothers and sisters, if Christ had not risen from the dead, we don't have anything to preach about. If Christ has not risen from the dead, there's no liberation in our presentation because what liberates the people is the knowledge that even if life kills you, three days later you can rise from your situation. And the mere fact that Christ has been risen from the dead that tells us that no matter what circumstance we may find ourselves in God is able to allow us to rise above the situation so let Negroes try to kill you let folks try to slay you let folks try to bind you in situations you've got to understand that the mere fact that Jesus Christ has been resurrected from the dead lets me he know there's no power on earth can hold you down if you are connected to him. I feel like preaching already in this house. And, and, and so, the, so the writer, watch this, the writer says that Jesus Christ, he's better, he's better because uh, of the resurrection, that he has been resurrected through the heavens. And the mere fact, pastors, that he has been resurrected to heaven, uh, it, number one, it means that we have a substance in our preaching. However, the mere fact that Jesus Christ has been resurrected from the dead, it also means uh, that we understand the strength of of his power. The Bible says in verse 14 that we have the kind of high priest that has gone through the heavens. Tell your neighbor he went through the heavens. Now that's significant. Watch this. That's significant. Because the Bible specifically says he went through the, can I teach you a little bit tonight? That, that he went through the heavens. The, the Bible just didn't say he ascended in the air. But, but the Bible says that he has gone through. Can the church say gone through the heavens? It, it just does not say that he, he rose from the dead and he is now seated on the right hand of the Father. But look at the text. The text says that he literally went through the heavens. Tell your neighbor through the heavens. 
Well, that's significant because that phrase alone through the heavens, it speaks of how much power Jesus Christ has, especially when you understand that Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 said that our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against authorities, against the powers of darkness in this world. Watch this. Against spiritual forces in the heavenly places. Watch this. The text suggests that the devil's realm is in heavenly places. And the mere fact the text says that Jesus went through the heavens, that means, watch this, that he defeated the devil on the devil's own turf. You, you, you missed what I just said. You missed it. You, you missed what I just said. I, I, I said, the Bible says that Jesus literally was resurrected and he went through the heavens. And because the devil is the prince of the air and because he operates in heavenly places, the mere fact Jesus Christ, he rises and goes through the heavens, it literally means that he goes on the devil's home turf and he defeats the devil in the devil's own backyard. You missed your chance to shout because that tells me brothers and sisters that you have the kind of power that Christ had to defeat the devil no matter where the devil shows up. You don't have to run from the devil on your job. You can defeat the devil in his own backyard. You don't have to run from the devil when he shows up in your life. You can defeat the devil wherever the devil shows up. I, I was watching, I was watching, I, I, I was watching um, uh, football. You were like this, G. I was watching football the other night, and, and the Jacksonville Jaguars uh, were playing um, the Pittsburgh um, Steelers. I, I was watching this, I was watching, I was watching this game. Um, the Jaguars were playing um, 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 the Steelers. And, 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 and many commentators thought um, that the Jaguars were going, watch this, to lose the game uh, um, because they were playing in Pittsburgh. Y'all, you missing where I'm talking about. Uh, they, they were playing in Pittsburgh. And the commentators thought that because they were playing in Pittsburgh, that Pittsburgh would have home field advantage. Oh, y'all ain't feeling what I'm talking about. They, they, they thought that Pittsburgh would have home field advantage because uh, they were playing uh, Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh. However, uh, because Jacksonville was the stronger team, uh, it didn't make a difference where they played Pittsburgh. Uh, how, can, can I give you another uh, example? Uh, because they had already beat Pittsburgh before in Pittsburgh, uh, when they got back in Pittsburgh the second time, uh, they just pressed a rewind button of our mind and said if I beat you in Pittsburgh before I can beat you in Pittsburgh again. You've got to understand that whenever you come up against the devil even if it's in his home field that if you've defeated him before press the rewind button of your mind and tell yourself if I stepped on his head before I can step on his head again. If I defeated him one time I can defeat him again. If I made him leave my children alone one time I I can make them leave them and go on again. What makes what makes Jesus better? The text says, watch this. He has resurrected into heaven. But 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 the text doesn't stop there. Uh, the text says that that we have the kind of high priests who can be touched, who can sympathize with our weaknesses. W one, help me somebody, who, who's been tempted in every way that we have, yet without sin. What, 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 what makes Jesus better? It's not only he's been resurrected into heaven, but he can relate to our hang-ups. Um, 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 he, 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 he can feel our frustrations. Uh, he, he knows what, Brian, what we go through. Uh, he, he tells someone that, but he can relate. He, he, he can relate. Um, 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 when, when, you, when you research 
um, priests in the Bible, um, you, you discover that m most priests in the Bible didn't have a personality. They, they, they lived in the temple away from the general populace. They, they were not allowed to attend funerals. They were not allowed to, to, to intermingle with the general population. They could not hang out in social gatherings. H however, uh, uh, the text makes a distinction between them and Jesus Christ. He, he, he says that we don't have the kind of, of high priest that, that cannot relate with our weaknesses. One translation says infirmities, but, but, but we have the kind of high priest that knows everything that we go through, that, that when we cry, help me somebody, and some of us have had to cry, anybody am I talking to have ever had to cry, that, that, that when we cry, he understands our tears because John 11 declares that the Lord cried, help me somebody, that when we feel forsaken Taken by our relatives and our friends. Uh, he understands how we feel uh, because John 1 11 declares he came to his own uh, and his own received him not when friends walk away and leave us. He understands that because John 6 verse 66 declares uh, that people walked away from him uh, when we are stabbed in our back. He understands uh, because John 19 34 declares uh, he was pierced in his side. Y'all ain't hearing me. Uh, when people do us wrong he understands all about it because he had one disciple to forsake him, one to deny him and others walked away. The point is brothers and sisters, we have the kind of Christ who understands what we are going through and because he understands our weaknesses because, are y'all hearing me tonight? Because he understands our infirmities. When we go to him in prayer, we don't have to try to sugarcoat the matter. When we go to God, I feel like preaching now. When we go to God in prayer, we don't have to go to him talking about how we're beaten, knee bent, and body bowed with our face turned to the rising dust. Or we can go to God ourselves and tell him exactly what we want. In fact, the hymn writer declares, because he knows all about our strength, struggles. Uh, we can go to God uh, and tell him everything that we're going. And I'm glad tonight uh, that whenever my way is dark, my mountains are high and my valleys are low, I can steal away and talk to God in secret prayer. And he knows everything I'm going through. Uh, I don't have to worry about dotting the I, crossing the T, simply because we have the kind of high priest who knows what we are going through. And I, maybe I'm not talking to nobody else but it makes me feel good just knowing that the Lord knows all about it am I talking to anybody in this house he knows about our temptations Luke 4 declares that he was tempted just like we are y'all hearing me in this house so the point is brothers and sisters that what makes Jesus better is because he can relate to our hang ups tell your neighbor your hang ups and don't act like you don't have any hang ups every one of us in the building we have some hang ups but I praise God that somebody declared he was hung up for every one of my hang out are y'all hearing me he was hung up for my hang ups uh, and because I got a hang up uh, because I got an issue because I may struggle because I may fall down I can go to God uh, and tell God about my hang up because he was hung up for my hang up this this we, we don't we, we don't have the kind of high priest, thank you, Lord, that cannot be touched with our emotions, that cannot be touched with our infirmities, our weaknesses. All of us have weaknesses. Y'all ain't talking to me in this house. Some of us are looking like we don't have weaknesses all of us have y'all ain't going y'all don't like me in this house tonight weaknesses but Jesus understands our weakness 
And the Bible declares he would not allow us to be tempted above our ability to handle it. But with the temptation, I wish I had a Bible reader. He always makes a way of escape. Help me somebody. So I praise God for my high priest who can always make a way out of no way. And so the writer, the writer is making a strong argument. He's trying to compel these believers not to give up on Jesus. He, he, he tells them, are y'all hearing me tonight? That Jesus is better than the high priest. Because there were limitations on the earthly priest. He can only go into the holies of holies. But our high priest, Lord let me preach tonight. Has been resurrected into the heavens. The earthly high priest was so stoic. So introverted. They can't relate to what we're going through. But we have the kind of high priest that understands our weaknesses. So he concludes the matter by saying, let us therefore approach the throne of grace boldly. That we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our hour of need. He says that what makes our high priest, and I'm finished, better is not just the fact he's been resurrected into heaven and can relate to our hangups, but our high priest has removed every hindrance. Everything that was stopping us from worshiping the Lord has been removed. To understand, brothers and sisters, the magnitude of this statement you have to understand that there were hindrances to the worshipers of old. That KB, everybody wasn't allowed to worship the Lord. That worship was not inclusive, but worship was exclusive. There was a discriminatory establishment of worship at the time based on sexism, classism, and ageism. Sexism in the sense that women, watch me y'all, women were not allowed to enter into the temple. Therefore, women couldn't worship the Lord. It was based on classism in the sense that if you could not afford, amen, the sacrifice that would be placed on the altar, you could not afford to worship the Lord. So consequently, rich people, people had more of an opportunity to worship the Lord. Poor persons oftentimes didn't have the opportunity to worship the Lord because they could not afford the sacrifice. Children were not allowed to offer sacrifices in the temple. Therefore, worship was not complete. Worship was not was just available to everybody. But thank God for Jesus. Because the Bible declares in Romans chapter 5 verse 1 and 2 that therefore since we've been justified through faith, uh, we have now peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ uh, through whom we have gained uh, access. Come on, somebody just shout access. We have access by faith into grace uh, in which we now stand. In other words, brothers and sisters, uh, because uh, of Jesus Christ, classism has dissipated. Uh, sexism has dissipated. Uh, ageism has dissipated. Uh, now men and women, uh, boys and girls, uh, Jews and Gentiles, uh, the haves and the haves not, uh, the intellect and the ignorant, uh, every Everybody now are free to worship the Lord. In fact, the Bible clearly says that because the middle wall has been broken down, because 
the veil of the temple has been rent. We now, brothers and sisters, have access to come to the throne of grace boldly and obtain mercy at the time of need. Therefore, saints of God, I don't need an intermediary. I don't need a high priest to make intercessions on my behalf. I don't have to sit down on the side of a wall with a veil between me and the priest. I can talk to God myself. I wish I had some help in this house. And my brothers and my sisters, uh, if there's no other reason to give God praise, uh, you ought to praise him because you have access. Uh, tap your neighbor, says neighbor, you have access. If I had to wait for the priest to worship the Lord, uh, I'd have to wait till he had breakfast. I'd have to wait till he got up. Uh, I'd have to wait my turn. But I praise God tonight, my brothers and my sisters, uh, that because of Jesus Christ, because he is much better than the earthly priest. We have access to come to God for ourselves. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, I have access. Therefore, brothers and sisters, as I hasten this feeble presentation tonight, let me close by saying these words. I concur with the writer of Hebrews in declaring that Jesus Christ is better. He's better than the earthly high priest. He's better than angels. He's better than prophets. I disagree with my brothers from Islam that he's not just a prophet. He's not just a messenger from God he is God and because he is better I've already made my resolution my resolution is this because he is better my faith in him will be unwavering my trust in him will be undoubting my commitment to him will be unchanging my praise to him will be unrelenting my love for him will be unfailing my thoughts concerning him will be unfading my service to him will be untiring my testimonies of him will be unceasing because he's better my loyalties to him will be undying my blessings from him are so undeserving because he's better and my brothers and sisters because because he's better. I am convinced that can't nobody, yeah, do me like Jesus. Because he's better. Can't nobody love me like him, comfort me like him, hold me like him, console me like him. Because he's better. Can't nobody dry tears from my eyes, hold my hand when I walk through trials, guide my feet when I go through uncertainty, keep my mind where my thoughts are convoluted. Keep my heart uh, when my emotions are out of control. Uh, in fact, turn to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, he's better. Uh, and if you believe tonight uh, that we serve the God uh, who is better, uh, you ought to make a joyful uh, noise unto him uh, and serve him uh, with gladness. Uh, then come before him uh, with singing uh, and know that he's God, uh, that it is him uh, who made us and not we ourselves if you know he's better then recognize the fact that we are his people and the sheep of his pasture if you know he's better then when you come to church enter into his gates with thanksgiving into his courts with praise be thankful unto him and bless his name for the Lord you ain't hearing me for the Lord not Buddha for the Lord not Muhammad for the Lord not Confucius but the Lord is good his mercy endureth
faith for everlasting his truth endure to all generations I gotta get out of here but I may be talking to somebody in the building who's vacillating in your faith who's trying other options wait a minute you ain't got to do drugs he's the rock in the weary land you don't have to lead the church he is our way maker turn to somebody close and say neighbor he's better than anything I know he's better than anybody I know how do you know I tried him for myself I gotta get out of here I stopped by here tonight to make an announcement that Jesus is better than a husband he's better than a wife he's better than a good job he's better than a good car because wives can show enough lead you jobs can lay you off cars will break down houses will be vandalized but Jesus he'll walk with you talk with you Jesus he'll be with you all the way Turn to your neighbor, says, neighbor, I decided uh, to stay with him. You ain't doing it. Uh, say, neighbor, I decided uh, to stay with him. Uh, you may go, but he been too good. He's been too good. He's been too good. He's been too good. I got to get out of here. But when I think about all oh, he done for me, my soul get happy. When I think about what he done for me, you ain't got to shout. You ain't got to bless him. But I will. Y'all ain't hearing me. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise. Yeah. His praise shall be in my mouth. Amy Arena, say yeah, say yeah, yeah. He's better. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. I'm finished. But if he don't bless me, he's still better. If he don't raise me up, he's still better. If he never healed my body, he's still better. If I don't get married, he's still better. If I don't get a husband, he's still better. If I don't get the job, he's still better. Give him a better praise. Give him a better praise. Give him a better praise. Yeah! Oh, yeah! Don't throw in the towel. The doors are trying to open. Listen. Listen. I, I, I read. I'm finished. I read an article, and the fastest growing religion in this country is Scientology. Scientology. Fastest growing religion is Scientology. And, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the person said that when they go, they don't acknowledge God, they don't acknowledge Jesus Christ, that they, they acknowledge the spirits in everybody. No acknowledgement of Jesus, no acknowledgement of God, but it's the fastest growing religion now in the United States. Stars turning to Scientology, not just Caucasian. African-American, 
popular rappers. Dougie Fresh, you know Dougie Fresh. Six many, six minutes, Dougie Fresh, you on, y'all come on. Dougie Fresh. I know I lost some of y'all. That Dougie Fresh, six minutes. Dougie Fresh. Tur turning, watch this, turning to Scientology. Pe people are looking for something else. People are turning to this prosperity movement. Th this, this movement that promises you you can be a millionaire and promises you a life absent of struggle. But I choose Jesus. I choose Jesus. Because Jesus is better. What makes him better? He's resurrected to heaven. Seated on the right hand side of the Father. He can relate to what I'm going through. He just doesn't have eyes and can't see. And ears and can't hear and have arms and can't feel. But then he's removed every hindrance. That now, unlike my Catholic brothers and sisters, I don't need to sit on the other side of a booth and confess my sins to man. I can get in my closet, close the door behind me, turn off the lights, tell the Lord all about my trouble. He's better. He's, he's better. 